Welcome back to Pearl Mr. Channel. In this video, we will walk you through the configuration process for the Pearl on Smart L3 series or your solar inverter. After powering on the device, press the set button to enter the setup program. Setting 0 is used to exceed the setup program, designed to prevent accidental entering into the setup mode. To exceed the setup, press the enter button while in setting 0 and you will return to the main screen. Setting 1 allows you to configure the AC output priority. The UTI option represents the utility priority mode. In this mode, grid power is the primary source for powering the load, with battery power only activated when the grid power is unavailable. If solar power is sufficient, it will always be used to supply the load. The SPU option represents the inverter priority mode, where the inverter primary uses solar power to supply the load. If solar power is insufficient, battery power will supplement it. If the battery voltage drops too low, the inverter will immediately switch to grid power to ensure stable supply. The SOL option represents the solar priority mode, where solar power is the primary source for the load when it's sufficient, with excess energy charging the battery. If solar power is insufficient, battery power will be supplements the load. When neither solar power is available nor battery voltage is sufficient, grid power will be used to supply the load. This mode maximizes the solar energy utilization while maintaining the battery storage safety. Setting 2 configures the AC alpha frequency with options for 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Setting 4 configures the voltage at which the alpha power switches from battery power to grid power when SBU or SOL options are selected. Setting 5 configures the voltage at which the alpha power switches from grid power back to battery power when SBU or SOL options are selected. Setting 6 is used to set the battery charging mode. The SNU represents the solar and utility charging the battery at the same time. Solar at the first priority, utility power as the supplement when solar power is not sufficient. When solar power is sufficient, the grid power will stop charging. OSO represents only solar charging the battery. CSO mode represents solar is the first priority in charging, utility charging the battery only when solar power is not available. CUV mode represents the utility is the first priority in charging, solar power charging the battery only when utility is not available. Setting 7 configures the maximum battery charging current, with different power models having different current limits. The charging current can be set according to the battery parameter table. Setting 8 configures the battery type, with options including GEL batteries, 14 stream lithium iron phosphate batteries, 15 stream lithium iron phosphate battery. 16 strain lithium iron phosphate battery, 13 strain turnover lithium batteries, 14 strain turnover lithium batteries, constant options, self lead seed batteries, and the fluid lead seed batteries. If the USC option is selected, custom charging parameters can be configured throughout the setting 9 to 15. Setting 9 configures the boost charging voltage. Setting 10 configures the duration of constant voltage charging. Setting 11 configures the flow charging voltage. Setting 12 configures the battery over discharge voltage. Setting 13 configures the battery over discharge delay. When the inverter detects that voltage has reached the over discharge voltage, it will shut down the inverter output after set delay time. Setting 14 configures the battery under voltage alarm voltage. When the inverter detects that the battery voltage has below this value, 
It will issue the low voltage alarm, but the inverter will not shut down the output. Setting 15 configures the battery under voltage limit voltage. When the inverter detects that battery voltage is below this value, it will immediately shut down the output. Setting 16 configures the enabling or disabling of the battery equalization charging function, mainly charging float and lead C batteries. Setting 17 configures the battery equalization charging voltage. This is the voltage applied to the battery during the equalization charging process. Setting 18 configures the duration of the equalization charging. Setting 19 configures the equalization charging extension time. If the battery voltage does not reach the set equalization charging voltage within the duration set in setting 18, the inverter will extend the equalization time according to this setting. Setting 20 configures the frequency of battery equalization with a default of once every 30 days. Setting 21 configures the immediate enabling or disabling of the battery equalization function. Setting 22 configures the enabling or disabling of the power saving mode. Setting 23 configures the enabling or disabling of the overload auto restart function. If this function is enabled, the inverter will attempt to restart automatically after an overload shutdown in 3 minutes, with up to 5 attempts. Setting 24 configures the enabling or disabling of the over temperature auto restart function. If enabled, the inverter will restart automatically when the temperature returns to a normal value after an over temperature shutdown. Setting 25 configures the enabling or disabling of the buzzer. If deactivated, the inverter will no longer emit buzzer alarms. Setting 26 configures the enabling or disabling of the mode switching alarm function. By default, this function is enabled, and the buzzer will alert when the output priority power source switches. Setting 27 configures the enabling or disabling of the inverter's overload bypass function. Setting 28 configures the maximum grid charging current. Different power models have different current limits, and the charging current can be set according to the battery parameter table. Setting 30 configures the RS-485 communication address. Setting 31 configures the AC output mode, applicable only to power models. Setting 32 enables BMS communication. SLA option is for PC or remote monitoring protocol. 485 is for IS485 BMS communication protocol. CAM is for CAM BMS communication if required. Setting 33 configures the BMS communication protocol, allowing the selection of a matching protocol as needed. Setting 34 configures the enabling or disabling of the grid type function. This function must be strictly enabled or disabled according to the local regulations. When on grid is selected, solar energy will be prioritized for charging the battery, then supplying the load with excess power fed into the grid. When parameter 1 selects a UTI, the solar energy is prioritized to charge the battery and any excess energy will be used to power the load and the PV energy is not fed into the grid. With an anti-backflow function, the PV energy is not fed back into the grid. Setting 35 configures the battery under voltage recovery voltage. After the inverter shut down the AC output due to under voltage, it will restart AC output when the battery voltage reaches this value. Setting 37 configures the voltage at which the inverter will restart charging the battery after it is fully charged. Setting 38 configures the phase voltage of the AC output, which can be set according to the needs of the load and application. Setting 39 configures the charging current limits method, requiring BMS communication to activately set this program. The LC BMS option limits to the battery BMS maximum charging current.
IMB option limits to the inverters on maximum charging current. Set option limits the maximum charging current to value set in setting 7. If BMS communication is not enabled, this setting does not need to be configured. Setting 40 to 45 configures the time periods for grid charging or load bearing. You can set up to 3 time slots to confirm the periods for charging or load bearing. Setting 46 configures enabling or disabling of the time segmented charging or load bearing. If enabled, the inverter will charge the battery or supply the load from the grid during the time period set in setting 40 to 45. When the function is enabled, the output priority mode will automatically switch to SBU. Setting 47 to 52 configures the time periods for battery discharge. And similarly, you can set up to three time slots to confirm the periods for battery discharge. The setting 53 configures enabling or disabling of the time segmented battery discharge function. If enabled, the inverter will allow battery discharge to supply the load during the time period set in setting 47 to 52. When this function is enabled, the output priority mode will automatically switch to UTI, even if the setting 46 is enabled. Setting 54 configures the local date. Setting 55 configures the local time. Setting 56 configures enabling or disabling of the leakage detection protection function. Setting 57 configures the current at which charging will terminate. When the charging current falls below this value, the inverter will stop charging. Setting 58 to 62 configures SOC value for battery charging and discharging. If BMS communication is not used, these options do not need to be set. Setting 58 configures the discharge alarm SOC. When the battery SOC falls below this value, the inverter will issue an alarm. Setting 59 configures the discharge cutoff SOC. When the battery SOC falls below this value, the inverter will stop discharging the battery. Setting 60 configures the charge cutoff SOC. Setting 61 configures the SOC at which the output mode switches to grid output mode. Setting 62 configures the SOC at which the output mode switches to inverter mode. Setting 63 configures the MPE bonding automatic switching function. If enabled, the MPE connection will switch automatically. This function ensures proper grounding and safety, particularly in off-grid or backup power scenarios, preventing potential grounding issue and ensuring compliance with safety regulations. Setting 67 configures the grid type power limit, which must be set below the maximum output power limits of the respective model. Setting 17 configures the enabling or disabling of the insulation resistance detection function. This concludes the complete setup procedure for post on Smart L3 series all in one solar inverter. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.